Hi everyone, it's Olivia from Panda Press. I hope you're all keeping warm. I know I'm doing my best here. In this video, we are going to be printing a design on this envelope using the Rizo. So I've been getting color chart requests from all over the world and it is such a joy and a pleasure and an honor for me to be sending those out. Unfortunately though, I think my envelope is a little bit plain. Sometimes I do put a pin dot press pinwheel sticker in the back, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. So in this video, we are going to be putting a return address label on the upper left hand side, as well as a design motif in the back. And on the flap side, I'm going to be sketching out and designing a postcard. So this is going to be like a postcard envelope. And then we are going to scan the sketch and put it on Photoshop and add some colors and some textures on it and then print it in two color on the Rizo. So hopefully you join me for this process. And when I do get a color chart request in the mail going forward, I will be so happy and proud to be sending this postcard envelope along with the color chart. So I'm actually gonna be making a postcard of Pin Dot Press. It's actually not gonna be looking like this for very much longer. I'm in the process of rearranging everything right now. It's a dump, it's a workplace hazard. But yeah, it won't be like this for long. And I think when I make a sketch of the studio, it's just going to be taking some elements and trying to make it look kind of artistic. Well, I don't know, we'll see. Alright, so this is what I have for now. As you can see, there's a lot of pencil smudging happening. This is actually what the studio looks like. And in my drawing, I cleaned it up a little bit more. And I also changed the space and the proportions of things. So yeah, I think we're ready to bring this into Photoshop. All right, so we're first going to be working on the back or the addressing side of the envelope. So last night I worked on this drawing of an ink tube and so that's going to go in the back and I'm also going to be typing out my mailing return address. For this part of the process, I decided after playing around with some preset Photoshop patterns that I actually just wanted to make my own round dot screen tone. And so I just created a blank gray image and then went up to image mode and converted it to grayscale. And from grayscale, you can make this into a bitmap. I chose a very low lines per inch or LPI setting to make the dots slightly bigger. After that, I converted the bitmap back to grayscale and made the size ratio to be just 1. And then you can double click on the background layer to make it into a regular layer and bring that into your working file and use it however you wish. The cool part about this process is that you can actually make a lighter screen tone without changing the size of the dots by making your grayscale value lighter. So I'm going to show you that right now. So right now, our grayscale value is around here. So I'm just gonna make a new file. So let's do another new file. And I am going to move up the grayscale value to about this light so that there is a notable difference between this one and the other file. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that with a lighter gray. And we're gonna go to mode grayscale and 
go ahead and discard all colored data. And we're going to go to image mode and then bitmap. And same thing, 300 pixels per inch, half tone. And same lines per inch, same everything. And we're going to hit that. So as you can see, there is a difference between these two. So let's take a look at what the difference is. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that the dots are far apart and the dots are black dots. But if we go into this other file, you'll see that the dots are white. So at one point, the whole bitmapping flipped. So it flipped from being black dots for this lighter grayscale value to being white dots on a black background for the darker grayscale value. And that, I think, is just how Photoshop calculates how to recreate these different grayscale values into dots. So I hope that helps you in making some of your own screen tone patterns. All right, so this is the final file that we are going to be printing from. So here is the screen tone pattern and the drawing. And on this group, this folder, is the type. So what I did for the type was I knocked the type back to 80% opacity, and that is to prevent transferring. Because if you printed it at 100%, this font is gonna be super dark and inky, and as the envelopes are falling on top of each other after being printed, that ink will still be very wet and some of that dark ink might transfer to the envelope that's just been printed that's falling on top of it. So I just wanted to show you what transferring would look like if this were at 100% opacity. So I went ahead and I printed it on 100% opacity. And so if I flip that over, you're gonna see what the transferring would look like. So as you can see, that is what we want to avoid. And simply printing it at 80% will do a lot to help prevent this. All right, so I popped the medium blue ink cylinder in there and here's the envelope and I'm just going to put that into the feeding tray. Let's just check it for things like transferring. Okay, so there's hardly any transferring and this is a very smooth envelope stock. So that's gonna cause the ink to not be absorbed this fast and the transferring to be even more likely. So as you can see, even though I've printed it in 80% opacity, it still looks pretty good. It looks really legible and dark. You definitely don't wanna go too light because of postal service standards. So we've finished printing the whole stack and there were a few casualties due to jamming. So those creases are from the jamming and those dirt track marks are also from the jamming and little smudges Dirt smudges are also from the jamming, but I mean, that's just part of the process. So you're gonna lose a few along the way. So that's just to be expected. Yeah, so we're just gonna let this dry for about half a day and then we'll work on the other side, which is the postcard side. All right, so now we're gonna work on the postcard part. My piece is actually too big to scan all in one shot. So I actually only have a small home printer that scans legal size at the top platen area. So I had to rotate it and scan it in different parts. So for Photoshop, we're just gonna go to file and do a photo merge, which will or should 
put everything together automatically. So I just selected all the parts of the scan of this image and I'm just going to hit OK. And it's going to do its thing and hopefully it works. So I'm just going to collapse everything and the shortcut for that is Command or Control E. So this is the final artwork for the postcard side of the envelope. As you can see here, this is a two-color postcard. This is the pink screen tone pattern that is serving as sort of like a border around the black line work. So what I did for the pink screen tone is I knocked it down to 80% opacity, once again to prevent that transferring from happening. And for the black line work, I actually up the levels a little bit more to clean up a bit of that smudging. So it used to be a little bit closer to this, but I wanted to make sure that it's extra clean when it's printed, so I made it much, much more contrasted and removed some of that smudging going on. Another thing I'd like to mention is that when you are printing two colors smaller than a minimum size specification, a two color machine can't actually print it in two color in one pass. So if you look at the spec sheet for my machine, it says that the minimum size for a dual color print is 7.165 inches by 10.125 inches. And my envelope and my artwork is 5.75 inches by 9.5 inches, so it's smaller than that. The paper has to be lengthy enough to pass through the first position and then caught into the second position for it to be printed on and my envelope is just not long enough and so that's why I'm just going to have to do it twice all on the first position. So I don't think that's going to be causing too many issues. I don't think it's going to track that badly because the pink layer is quite light and I'm also going to be giving it a bit of drying time. So this is the final stack of envelopes. One thing to note though is that there is a bit of creasing on this side of the envelope and that's because I've run this right side of the envelope through the machine literally three times and when you run something on the same side so many times, the feeding mechanism is pretty hard on the paper. So to mitigate the creasing on the right side of the envelope, you can try rotating this envelope and feeding it from this side, which is a fresh side that hasn't been fed through yet. But I don't really mind the creasing so much because at the end of the day, this is just gonna go into the mail. It's gonna have the color charts in it and the person is probably just gonna open up the envelope, take out the color chart and throw this away. All right, so that is printing an envelope design on the Rezo. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one. So yeah, the renovation is underway. We literally made these shells from MDF and wood glue. So looking forward to finalizing that in the next few weeks and giving you all a proper studio tour. Looking forward to the finished product myself. See you in a bit.